योग कर्मसु कौशल नमस्कार आई एम डॉक्टर जगदीश जोशी प्रोफेसर एंड डायरेक्टर ऑफ यूजीसी ह्यूमन रिसोर्स डेवलपमेंट सेंटर ऑफ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी अहमदाबाद आई एम आल्सो द कोर्स कोऑर्डिनेटर ऑफ दिस ऑनलाइन रेफरेशन कोर्स ऑन इंग्लिश लैंग्वेज टीचिंग दिस इज द फर्स्ट ऑफ इट्स काइंड कोर्स फंडेड बाय एम एच आर टी एंड इट इज रन बाय नेशनल रिसोर्स सेंटर ऑफ गुजरात यूनिवर्सिटी अहमदाबाद आई वुड लाइक टू वेलकम एंड इंट्रोड्यूस द रिसोर्स पर्सन ऑफ टूडे डॉक्टर चारोल जैन Dr Jain is an associate professor in Department of English Faculty of Arts the Maharaja Sayaji Rao University of Baroda she has 25 years of teaching experience at undergraduate level and postgraduate level Dr Jain has taught in various premier institutes like Bets Pilani and LDR College Ahmedabad she is an avid researcher and academician she has taught students at various levels and in various programs ranging from diploma to guiding doctoral research as well as teaching humanities and social sciences law business communication and technology even engineering students she has extensively trained students for various entrance and competitive examinations of national and international levels like cat gre gmat toefl ilts net etc dr jain regularly trains teachers of schools and colleges in best practices of teaching english she is a relo certified trainer she trains teachers for colleges in latest methods and approaches for developing communication skills her areas of specialization are research english language teaching english for specific purpose indian writing in english and drama many of her articles have been published in journals of national and international repute she has authored seven books for the undergraduate students of english Dr Jain has been conducting workshops for students of various colleges for teaching them employability skills like drafting resume and facing interviews she also trains them for communication skills and personality development including speaking effectively in english developing directive reading and writing skills she has been actively interested and involved in teaching english integrating information and communication technology She has been developing MOOC courses for MHRD, EPG Pathshala, and also for Swayam. Dr. Charul Jain is a member of Board of Studies of her department and MS University, as well as member of faculty board at the university level. She is a member of the core team of IQAC of the MS University. She is regularly involved in several administrative and extracurricular activities of her department and the MS University. friends uh, after introducing her i would like to welcome her here with you and we will discuss with her about various initiatives of elt today she is going to talk about teaching writing ma'am i welcome you here in the program thank you very much sir i think that is a great initiative by the government and it will benefit very many teachers across the country who want to learn how to teach english and they can do so sitting at the convenience of their home i am also thankful to professor jagdish joshi coordinator of this entire program for giving me an opportunity to be a part of this program thank you this is a great opportunity for me to learn as well as to communicate what i have already learned thank you very much thank you ma'am today i am presenting to you the module on teaching writing an introduction i am dr charul jain from the maharaja sayaji rao university of baroda vadodara i would like to begin with a quote by francis bacon which you all probably would have heard some time reading maketh a full man conference a ready man and writing an exact man writing is a very important aspect of everybody's life in this module today we would be beginning with an introduction on writing 
we will take on importance of writing as a skill and as a formal expression and we would go on to look at various important factors for good writing. As you all might know, any language has two major systems. One is the phonological system which deals with sounds and the other is the orthographic system of language which deals with the signs and symbols and the letters and the script of the language. Earlier, people understood that writing is the only form in which languages existed. But in the early 20th century, several languages were discovered which existed only in the oral forms. Since then, there has been an emphasis on learning oral forms of language as well. Learning writing is different from learning speaking. Both of them are active skills. Still, there are some differences between speaking and writing. On one hand, we know that speaking is temporary. The word which you say remains only for the moment. But in writing, there is permanence. Whatever is written once remains accessible for several years after it is written. Speaking is immediate, it is unplanned. So when you speak, you immediately make decisions about what you have to say, how you have to say. Whereas in writing, you have the facility of planning. It is a delayed response. And as a result, you can plan, decide what you want to say. You can make modifications and changes in what you have said, what you have written. Speaking is immediate. It has immediate feedback. Whatever is said, immediately the other person responds. It is necessarily a two-way interaction at least. Whereas in writing, there is almost no feedback. Once a word is written, once a letter is written, there is no necessity that there would be a feedback on whatever is written. In several senses, when we speak, we use simple sentences. We do not go into very long, elaborate, complex, long winding sentences. But in case of writing, we make use of multiple kinds of sentences. We do use simple sentences, but at the same time, we often have compound sentences as well as complex sentences. And therefore, much more skill, much more complexity is needed to write than a speak. Speaking is voiced. You hear and then you immediately respond. Whereas in writing, you have to either read or construct your thought and on basis of that, you have to write something down. In case of speaking, we have high degree of paralinguistics involved in the sense that you have body language, facial expressions, postures, gestures, intonation, voice modulation, which convey a lot of meaning, which is not conveyed verbally. Whereas in writing, paralinguistics is low or completely absent. You do not have the facility of falling back upon pauses, gestures, body language, etc. So whatever function paralinguistics performs in case of oral or speech, that all has to be performed by choice of words and choice of sentences in writing. To learn speaking, we listen. Even a small child in a crib starts listening to people around him, the parents, the friends, the relatives. And by listening to them, the child learns the language and child learns to speak. Whereas in case of writing, a lot of formalized instruction is involved. Motor skills as well as cognitive skills get involved when writing is done. It is not merely thinking, but thinking also regarding appropriacy is what is being said. There is a concern which several teachers express very frequently. They believe that writing is the most neglected skill, particularly in teaching of English as foreign language. Some of the concerns and issues that teachers have raised time and again are, someone says, my classes are too large. Some says, 
I do not have enough time for writing, so the time that is needed for writing, my schedules do not provide me. The teachers of beginners often concern themselves regarding what can beginners write about, what topics can we give them to write about. They do not have sufficient dexterity in use of language, in use of grammar, in use of vocabulary. So, how can we ask them to write? And some teachers have expressed concerns like, I am not a good writer, so how can I teach writing? And the one which is most frequently heard is, students are not interested in writing, so how do I teach them writing? In spite of all these concerns, there is a necessity for us to understand the importance of writing. Writing is a form of output, thinking made evident thinking with a pencil. So, when you are thinking and you are jotting down your thoughts, that is writing. Writing is also a means of building fluency in language, in use of grammar, in use of sentence constructions, etc. Writing is a way of developing accuracy in grammar and vocabulary. When you are writing and you find that a sentence is incorrect grammatically, or some incorrect words have been used which can be substituted by better expressions, you can go back and make the necessary changes and therefore you can develop accuracy in writing. Writing is the way children think and express creativity, their uniqueness and they can indicate what they want and what they think. And most importantly, writing is a critical skill for academic and professional success. In the earlier days, writing was considered more important. Most of the schools used to teach grammar and grammar was taught through writing. But in the beginning of the 20th century, when several languages were discovered, which were primarily in the oral form, it was realized that oral is primary, speaking is primary and not writing. And nowadays, speaking is considered more important than writing. Nevertheless, writing has its own importance which is very, very significant. The first most important thing regarding writing is, writing preserves human history. If we go to several caves, for example, Bhim Betka caves, or we look at certain hieroglyphs, certain records which come down to us thousands of years ago, you find that it is only in the written form that history has been brought down to us and therefore orality somehow may get distorted, may get changed, may get lost, but writing is permanent. Writing is also a proof of authenticity in law. Writing also is a passage to jobs. People have to write job applications, they have to fill certain forms and only then they become eligible to apply for a job. It is also very important for official records and communication. So, most of the official records, most of the official work is not done verbally, it is not done orally, everything is written as a proof, as a record of whatever has transpired and whatever decisions have been taken. Another importance of writing is found in case of academics and intelligentsia. Most of the books are written and students read through those books. Teacher delivers a lecture, but the students ultimately fall back upon the books which are written. Even the teachers assess students writing in examination and very few examinations are conducted orally and therefore writing has a lot of importance. And also it is a means of communication very much prevalent even today, texting, writing letters, emails, on social media, etc. Writing has been accepted as a very important means of communication. We often think of writing as something that is inborn, but that is not really the case. Writing is an art, it is a craft, it is a technique. Let us look at various kinds of writing that one does on a regular basis. People frequently write letters, they write emails, there are several kinds of reports which are written in organizations from time to time, several kinds of applications are written, 
advertisements all around us to sell things, to advertise things. There are brochures, there are manuals and the list goes on. I am sure you can add many more items, varieties of writing to this list which I have proposed to you. But my question to you now is, is writing always purposeful? Is there always necessarily a purpose behind writing? What about texting? Texting between friends, does it have a purpose? The leaflets that you get when you are standing at the gates of colleges, there are people who hand over leaflets to you. Hoardings that you see across the city, forms that you have to fill, railway station forms for booking train tickets, for booking flight tickets, for getting admissions, for getting memberships. What about invitations? Is there a purpose to writing? Yes, there is always a purpose to any kind of writing that we see. Whether it is a formal piece of writing or an informal piece of writing, one thing that is common in all is a purpose. Writing is a formal expression as well. Since we began by talking about the specific purpose which is there in writing, let us take an example. Wordsworth wrote daffodils. He wrote a poem. He took fancy to the daffodils sowing in the fields. Had he simply thought and uttered a few lines, probably he would not have been remembered so long. But he decided to write it down. He wanted to convey it to the people what his thoughts were at that moment. Emotions recollected in tranquility. That was the purpose of his writing daffodils. Is there a specific audience in writing? Yes, of course. When you write a piece for small kids, a story that is written for small kids would have a different kind of orientation than when it is written for aged, matured audience. There is always a scope for writing. So when Wordsworth writes daffodils, he writes only about daffodils. He does not write about lilacs. He does not write about roses. He writes only about the daffodils because that is what caught his fancy. So there is a scope, there is a limitation, there is a framework within which one functions. In writing, there is also a specified format. You have certain specific formats of writing letters, formats of writing reports and formats of writing emails and memos. Whereas in case of speaking, you do not have any boundaries of formats. In writing, there is a specified language. You have to choose your words carefully. You have to be precise and concise and most importantly, you have to be accurate. So we are now looking at factors of good writing. The first one which we look at is knowledge that is required to write is the knowledge of language. We need to know the spellings, we need to know the punctuations, grammatical structures, lexis and primarily know how to make connections between ideas, between sentences to effectively communicate ourselves. The second important thing that is needed is knowledge of topic, the content that we are going to talk about. We have to have knowledge about what we need to say, how we need to say and how much we need to say. The third thing that is required is knowledge of audience, knowledge of who we are writing to. Audience determine a lot about how we write the piece. And last but not the least, our stored writing plans which we also called schemata or the background knowledge. There is a formal schemata and a content schemata. What are the kind of formal structures, formal language that we have to use and the content that we have to select, they are all important factors for good writing. According to NWP and Nagin, audiences mature as writers by understanding how to write for different audiences, contexts, and purposes. Let us now go through what we have learned in this module so far. We began with an introduction to writing as a system. 
then we had a brief look at the differences between speaking and writing. We looked at the concerns which people express about writing as a neglected skill and then we went on to pay attention to importance of writing as a skill 